So, uh, so there's a lot of applications of, of, of this. One of the application is the following. So uh, what happens is uh, in your computer, things are processed as basically bits, right? So what are bits essentially? So bit a, a bit in a computer basically is what? A bit is basically has two possible values. Zero or one, right? Yeah. Basically, you can think about one being what? One is equivalent to two, and this being equal to false, right? So now, so logical operations, so the logical operations, like, and are, are exclusive or can be applied applied to string of bits. Okay, of, of course, of same length though, yeah, of same length. Okay, let's look at an example, okay? So suppose I have, let's take 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Yeah, and then I have, what is the length of this guy, by the way? Length is, length of this string is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Yeah. And you'll see that later on when you do some math or computer science, you'll see that these are important because the uh, eight bit represents a byte, okay? And that's how you get basically, you know, you have some data which is like whatever, nine megabytes or something. What does it mean? Basically, if you decompose it as zeros and ones, you will see that there are what nine megabytes of data. That means 10, one, zero, two, four, bytes. That means one, zero, two, four multiplied by some number, okay? So these many strings are there, right? At the end of the day, everything is zero. It's basically some string, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do some operation. So let's say, let me just take one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero. And I want to do say exclusive or, I'm just doing one example of it. You could have and or whatever, right? So the way it works is when you're doing this problem, you're going to do things bit by bit, all right? So let's see, what is exclusive or of zero one is gonna be one. What about this guy? One, what about this one? Zero, one, one, oh my bad. one, one, one. So this is an example of an exclusive or of these. Yeah. Similarly, you can have and of these two bits too. I mean, like some random, again, I'll just write down the same thing. You're saying, how are you going? Are you going from left to right or right to left? And the answer is that doesn't matter really. Why? Because, well, it's all bit by bit, right? Anyway. Yeah, there's no carry over nothing, right? Yeah, so. Let's say basically, let's do and of these. So we get what? Zero, 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 one, zero. So this is and of these two, okay? So this is basically, this is bitwise XR. Bitwise XR. And this can be called as bitwise and. So these are bitwise operations, okay? Yeah, they have applications, all right? I mean, not what we are doing right now in this course, but again, it's a good idea to have applications later on, okay? Now, so we talked about two things now. We talked about, let's go back now. So we talked about logical equivalence, right? We said two statements are logically equivalent if what? If they have the same distribution of truth values or Two statements are basically their by implication is a tautology. Yeah. So now, how do we prove that? Well, one method is using the tabular method, which we already got it. The other method is basically using laws of logic. All right. So now, what is law of logic? Laws of logic is basically there are already some laws, existing laws, which we can actually prove 
and these laws of logic will help us basically to to prove slightly more complicated things okay so what are the laws of logic let's look at those laws and uh, let's look at the following in exam you will be provided these logic laws of logic table and we'll use that to maybe prove some things we'll see when it comes to it but let's look at few of them so p and p is equivalent to p or p or false is equivalent to p this is called uh, these statements are identity laws right and you can quickly verify the value of this. is it is it right i mean p let's look at this statement okay so we have p and two so well p has what values so p has values zero one or two and false i'm mean, like and then we have true what is the value for true both truths right so p and truth will have what in this case we'll have truth and in this case we have what false so you see that the they are exactly the same statement yeah why i mean there are two ways to look at that one is that they have same distribution of truth values or another way to look at that is what again another way to look at that is if you look at p you'll always get this to be what two, two. so this is a tautology yeah what is the meaning of this the meaning of this is simply wherever you have p and two you can simply replace that by what p that is what is the meaning of this statement right why because they are exactly the same thing yeah does it make sense right similarly we have domination laws so p or true is true yeah don't worry about the name but you can associate some value reason to the names identity laws is like numbers right what is x plus 0 x 0 is the identity right in the addition so same way in logic you have basically you have p and True or p or false is basically in both the cases we get p. Yeah. Now another one is p or p is p. Yeah, makes sense, right? And p and p is p. These laws are called idempotent laws. Yeah, name is not important again. In in mathematics, if some number satisfies x square equals to x, that number is called idempotent. That's where the name comes from. Here we have p or p gives you p. Or P and P also gives you what? Yeah, you can check that, right? I mean, if you're not sure, check it. I mean, although it's a uh, so P, let's take statement P. It is true or false. In that case, if we take another statement P, which is the same statement, it will be what? True or false. P and P or P will be what? True. So you see, same distribution. So P or P has same distribution as P. That means what these two statements are equivalent. You can get rid of. Whenever you see P or P, you can just replace it by P. All right. Similarly, uh, negative P and negative of that, that will give you back what? Right? That, that makes sense, right? You have negative of P. If it is true, false, it will become false, true. You do another negative, it becomes true, false. The second one is, so, and similarly with and. So we have P or Q is same as Q or P. Yeah, that's the, these are called commutative laws. Yeah. Some few things satisfy the commutative laws. Not everything satisfies the commutative law, right? So anyway, uh, so we have P or Q is same as Q or P. Similarly, we have P and Q is same as Q and P. So whenever you see P or Q, you can replace it by Q or P. And if you have P and Q, you can replace it by Q and P. Depending on the situation. Yeah, it's not like, you know, you're just randomly replacing them. You will see, oh, there is some scenario where you have to replace P and Q by Q and P, and that will make your life easy. So you basically go for that. Now, so this one is interesting. So this is associative law. So uh, this here we have to have a caution. We have P or Q or R. In this case, both the operations are what? R. In that case, we can we can batch them like that, okay? If both the operations are same, yeah? You'll say, oh, how do I see this? Again, truth table. Look at the truth table. You'll see the truth table of these two values will be exactly the same, okay? Similarly, if as long as both of these operations are same, 
you have the associativity law. Associativity simply means what? You have P or Q or R, right? You do P or Q or you do Q or an R and then do P. The output value will be the same. Okay, so that is why it's called associative. In numbers also, we have associativity. For example, this is called associativity of numbers. You have two plus three plus four. This is same as what? Two plus three, four. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So our multiplication also satisfies. The next one is distributive law. If these operations are not same, P and Q or R, yeah, you see these two operations are not same, right? Yeah, in that case, we have to be slightly careful. We say this is gonna be P or R, so you do P or R and Q or R. This is called distributive property. You're distributing over. Again, this comes from the numbers. In numbers, we have two different kinds of what operations. So suppose I have three plus two multiplied by five. Yeah. In that case, when I want to open the bracket, it's what? Five times three plus five times what? Two, isn't it? Here you have multiplication and addition, which are different operations. So when you open, you distribute it. So same thing for logic as well. We have P and Q or R, that is same as P or Q and Q. And same way, if you change them also, you get the same. All right, now, the next one is called De Morgan's Law. Yeah. De Morgan's Law is a very important law. You'll see it in set theory as well. So what is De Morgan's Law? If you have and, P and Q, and you have a negative in front of it, this is same as negative P, negative Q. The negative will come inside to both of them, and this will become and. If we have negative P and Q, then you can have, this is equivalent to negative P or negative Q. Yeah. We can check one of these statements. Why not, right? I mean, like, but we will take them as basically laws of logic when we are solving some problems that will make our life easier. But let's look at a few of these examples. So we have, uh, let's take a P, Q. Let's say basically we want to prove this. Let's say the first one. Then we take P or Q. Then we take negative P or Q. And then we take negative P. We take negative Q. And we need negative P and negative. Okay. And we want to basically see if this is a, these two things are same, right? If these two means basically, if star, star one, star two, these two are same, right? So now how do we do that? We are trying to use basically the table, all right? Because if you have to use the algebraic method, then it's already given to us, yeah? Algebraic method means basically using this, this list of results to solve something, yeah? So let's try to prove this by table, so again, there are how many variables? Two. So we will have one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Let's look at P or Q. So it's going to be one, 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 zero. Negative of this is going to be zero, 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 one, right? Negative P is going to be zero, zero, one, one. What is negative Q? One, zero, one. What is negative P and Q? So let's look at and of this. Zero, 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 one. Look at these two tables. Table. These two are same tables, right? Yeah. That means that these two statements are equivalent statements. Okay. So, yeah. So that's D Morgan's law. So there are two D Morgan's law. You have negative of P and Q, or if you have negative of P or Q, all right? So in D Morgan's law, what happens? Uh, the, it comes inside and then and becomes or, or R becomes R. Is that okay? Now, next one is implication reduction. We have already seen this. We already showed this, right? P implies Q is same as what? Negative Q, sorry, negative P or Q. 
So these two statements are also equivalent. So this is basically the idea behind the implication reduction. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So now I want to give you some more problems. Pause it for a second and then ask you questions if you have any questions. Okay. So we want to do this. Uh, so we want to show that this is a tautology using algebraic method. Okay. So what does it mean that it's a tautology? I want to combine these statements. Yeah. At the end, I will just get what? T. Then it's a tautology. Is that okay? Yeah. So can you please try to do this? All right. Okay. So when I see this, there could be some many ways of doing it, but uh, what I'm seeing is that there are a bunch of implications, right? Uh, so what I'll do is uh, maybe I'll try implication reduction. Yeah, maybe. And see if it works. So we have here, so I can do so one. So then I have, I can write this as P implies negative Q or P and Q. And this is basically what implication reduction. Yeah, the name of the law is implication reduction. I mean, what is the implication reduction? It's essentially what implication is basically converted into an or. That's the name of this law. Okay. Now, if you want, now you can do implication reduction again to simplify it, or let's try to simplify inside the bracket. Doesn't matter. Now, let me see. So, this is an or and this is an and, right? So now I have to do what? If I have to combine them, I can use distributivity. Okay, so let's use distributivity. So I have again, P implies negative Q or P and negative what? And Q. Is that all right? Let's see. No, this is uh, and, and this should have been not and. This is what? Or here. Right? Because the way it works is that this or with this, this or with this separated by an and. Okay? So this is called distributive property. Distribute. Distributivity or distributive. Okay? Now, Let's see if I can simplify this any anything any further. Okay, so I have what P implies. So this, yeah. So then I have this statement. I have this statement. I can write it like this. I can write it like this because I'm doing a. Um, each of these steps are are what are are equivalent steps. So now I have negative Q or P, and then I have and. What is negative Q or Q? It is always what? True. Right? Why is that? Because of this is called uh, this is negative Q or Q is uh, where did that statement go? So I have negative Q or Q. So that statement, if its name is not given to us, uh, we can call that as some law. Okay. So this is always true, right? There's no name for this. There should be some name for this. Uh, okay. I will look it up. I mean, there should be some name to this as well. Okay. So now this is true. So now if I have a statement and true, then that statement becomes what? So if I do uh, and with true, what do I get? I get back the same statement, right? Isn't it? So this will become now, this is equivalent to P implies negative q or p and what is the definition this is a identity okay so now you see that complicated statement has reduced to this yeah now again i can apply what implication reduction right because there's p and q i'm hoping that i can combine them somehow yeah so this is going to be this is same as again negative p or and Q or P, right? Yeah, again, this is implication reduction.
All right. Now you can see. So now we have both of them are what and oh, sorry, yeah, both of them are R, right? So in that case, we will have basically associativity. Let me just bring P and P together, isn't it? Yeah, they can combine better. So I can change P or P or negative Q. And again, this is commutative law. Commutative simply means A, B, A or B, same as B or A. And now I have what? Negative P or P or negative Q. This is going to be what? Associative. Activity. And what is negative P or P? That's always true. True or negative Q. True or any other statement is always what? True. Yeah, what is the, this law called? This law is the following. It says, if you take any statement P or true, it's always going to be true. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's what the value for R is, right? If either one of them is true, then it's true. If you're taking, if you're taking any statement, yeah, and basically it doesn't matter whether it's negative Q or whatever, any complex statement doesn't matter. If you have true or any statement, then the output is true. So this is essentially saying that it's what? It's a tautology. Why is it a tautology? Because the output came out to be always true. Okay? So this is how you can reduce the statement with us. Right? Yeah. Sometimes you will have a problem where you have to say, okay, this is equal to, say, Q, for example. In that case, there'll be a bunch of reduction happening because of the laws, and then you'll get to the so if you look at this, this is almost like algebra, right? That's why it's called algebraic. You know, you are given an algebraic equation. Let's say you're solving for, say, suppose, let's just give an uh, analogy. Why such a name? Suppose I have x squared plus 2 equals to 3. Yeah, I want to solve this. Yeah. So what do we do in algebra? In algebra, we try to combine things together and simplify, right? We basically bring it on the other side. So we have x squared equals to one, then we do x squared minus one equals to zero, x minus one times x plus one equals to zero, and then we solve it, right? The same thing here as well. We are, what we're trying to do is, we have a bunch of logical statements, and we are trying to combine them together, okay? But what is the important tool here? The important tool is these algebraic laws, yeah? So these are, without these algebraic laws, of course, I mean, like, you know, so you have to basically uh, convince yourself that these algebraic laws are true. And how do you convince? I mean, yourself, either you see, argue it logically in your head, or you just write down truth table, right? I mean, like, truth table is a little bit of work, but then you can see really that, you know, then there is nothing to, you know, and there's no, no secret there anymore, right? Okay. So next statement is prove using truth table P implies Q and R is, is equivalent or logically equivalent. That, that, this, this double line means what? Logically equivalent. It's logically equivalent to this thing. Okay? So we are going to use the truth table here. Oh, well, why? Well, I mean, there's no reason why. I mean, generally, uh, so here I want to indicate how to use a truth table where there are three variables, right? So here there are three variables, right? So now three variables means how many different possibilities are there? Anyone? Eight possibilities. So we have P, Q, R. And the way it goes is you basically, uh, so the way you work this out is you will have, so you take the first one, so there are eight possibilities. So you will, half of them will be ones and then half of them will be zeros. Okay. And then you have Q. You will have 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. And then you have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And that way you can get all the possibilities. All right. And again, I want to repeat because I want to be precise. This is not necessarily the way you write the solution. But if you write it like this, you are listing all the possibilities. Okay. And it's also good for reader to read it. Okay. All right. So now let's basically work on 
this one first maybe okay so now let's try to build it so i'm going to build first q and r so let's build q and r so and 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 Now let's try to do P implies Q and R. Okay. So now let's see. So when I'm looking at implication, I try to always see if true implies false and false, otherwise always true. Okay. So I'm basically gonna look at here one implies zero. So one implies zero is zero, zero. Zero. Otherwise, it's always what? Right? You know, the fast way of doing this. Let me just check one implies zero. Okay. All right. So this is P implies Q and R. Now let's try to do this. P implies Q and P implies R. So let's see. So P implies Q. So P implies Q. So again, I'm going to look at one implies zero. Okay. So I have one implies zero, one implies zero. So here it's going to be zero, zero. Otherwise, it's the first one is one, one. Maybe it's a good idea to use uh, one, 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 one. And then this one will be one implies zero is going to be zero. One implies zero is going to be zero. And then these are all one, one, one. Okay. Now P implies R. So let's see. P implies R. Uh, one, so one implies zero is zero. So I have one. So let's see. One implies one is one. One implies zero is zero. One implies one is one. One implies zero is, is um, zero. Then all of the rest of them are ones. So one, one, one. Okay. Yeah. Now let's look at the and of these two, right? So next one is and of these guys and check, right? So we have and of these. So we have P implies Q and P implies R. So we have, we have what? And. So we have one, zero, 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 one, one, one. Are these two tables the same? So these two tables, they are same. So that means what? So therefore, we have to prove what we wanted to prove. Therefore, P implies Q and R is equal to P implies Q and P implies So I'll try to prove the same statement using algebraic method. It's actually pretty straightforward. So you let's start with the left-hand side, okay? So left-hand side, we have what P implies negative Q and R. Let's convert this using implication reduction. That's gonna be what? Negative P, R, Q, and R. And the reason is implication reduction. And then this is equivalent to, all right? So every time you're going to the next line, you should use this double sign, yeah? This is equivalent to the next statement. So now we are going to distribute it. So negative P R Q, and we have uh, uh, and negative Q P R R, okay? And the reason for that is distributivity. So distributivity. And now you can see clearly that this is P implies Q again, yeah? And P implies R. Why? Because this is basically, again, implication reduction or opposite of implication reduction, yeah? So implication reduction doesn't mean that you simplify. Implication reduction simply means that P implies Q is equal to negative P or Q. So you can either replace, go either way, and that is what will be called as implication reduction. So this, yeah, so this is implication implication reduction. Okay, and this is what is your 
this is what your RHS is, right? This is your right hand side. Right hand side. And voila, we are done. Okay, so that's how you can show that these two segments. All right, so now uh, there is a concept of duality in logic. So what is the concept of duality? The concept of duality is the following. You basically do the following. Let's take a look at the following statement. X and negative Y. I want to construct a dual of this statement. Okay. Whatever the dual means. So what is the dual of a statement? Okay. So here is the definition for the dual of a statement. So what are the steps? You replace every true by false. So you're going to replace what? This by false. All right. Then what do we do? Basically, we have, if you replace that true by false, what are the other things given to it? Replace every false by true. Replace every and by, by or. Now that makes more sense, right? So replace every and by or. So we'll have x, what? Or, or negative y. And replace every or by and. So this will be and. Yeah? Does that make sense to you? Yeah? So this statement is a dual of the other statement. Okay. Yeah. So what is the point of the dual statement? And the Boolean variables remain the same. You know, why are we calling Boolean? Well, Boolean simply means so Boolean actually was invented by George Boole, an Irish mathematician. So Boolean variables are variables which take zero or one output. Two valued variables are called Boolean variables. Such a simple thing given such a nice name. You will see that there is more reason to that. Now Let's try to see. So this is a big principle of duality statement. It says what? If S and R are logically equivalent propositions, if they are equivalent, then what? The duals are also equivalent. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So let's try to see if this is really the case. So let's take an example. We have negative X or Y. We know what is that equal to? Negative X and negative y, right? This is called D Morgan's law. Yeah, so D and then we have Morgan. Again, named after somebody, D Morgan's law. So these two statements are equivalent, right? Yeah. And now we want to show, I mean, we want to verify the principle of duality. Of course, this is not a proof. Principle of duality is such a big thing. We just want to verify, is it really true for this or not? So let's see, what are the principle of duality tells me replace every true by false and false by true. There's nothing here. So let's see further. Next one, replace every and by or and or by and. So let's replace every and by. So I'm going to replace this by and and replace this by or. And what will happen? Uh, what else? That's all, no? That's all the replacement I can do. Are these two statements are so if this these two statements are same, right? Are these two statements also same? Yes, there's a second D Morgan's law. The two D Morgan's law. Right? So you see that if the statement is true, then the dual of that statement is also. I mean, if two statements are equivalent, then the duals are also equal. So, so what is the big deal here? I think there's not much big deal like this. Level. I mean, you know, we are still, we're still building. You see, we are at the very baby step of logic. Yeah. And we will see further how we can use this. All right. So there are problems like three fact problems in computer science, like the satisfiability problem. Like you basically make a circuit out of something. Circuits are basically like these logical statements combined together. And then you try to basically make a statement about it, whether it's always true, always false or not. Sometimes in computer science, you're interested in actually, uh, that, that's what the, they do in research in computer science. You have basically big statements and you want to reduce it to basically a smaller statement. Why? Because you want to check if some statement is true or not, okay? In fact, if you are really, like all mathematical theorems are logical statements and then you basically, what? 
you basically are essentially doing some kind of a, all these logical transformations. It's very neat. Yeah. You will see soon the connection with the set theory as well. The logic is equivalent. All the laws of logic have exactly the same laws in set theory. All right. For example, I'll show you, I mean, I'll tell you just to basically have a motivation. So you know what is a complement of set, right? So A union B complement of this set is A complement intersection B complement. Looks like a D Morgan's law to me. Yeah. So there are deep connections between all these areas and, you know, we will see them as the time, as the time goes. Okay. All right. Let's look at another example. Switching networks. So convert the following circuit into logical state. So what do we do in this case? You're asking the question. You're not interested in parallel, you know, no, no, no parallel Ohm's law, you know, no, none of those. All you're interested is if there is a current, will it pass through or not? Okay. So if there's a current here, will it pass through here or not? Okay. So in this case, it will pass if either one of them is working, right? So I want to convert this into a logical statement. So this is gonna be P or Q. Yeah. Anything which is in the straight line should be connected by what? And, right? Otherwise it will not pass through. You see what I mean? Yeah. You know, if you have P and Q, then it will pass through only when we have what? P and Q is true. You agree, right? Otherwise, it will not. So this will basically correspond to and. What about this one? This is going to be P negative. And then we have what here? P, P, or R. So this is the, the, the equivalent of what? This is the equivalent of this. This is the circuit, a logical equivalent of this circuit. Okay, and now you can simplify it. I'm not gonna do that now, but if you simplify it a lot, then you can actually see that some of them you don't care. You know, you can keep some of them on and it will still work. Yeah, so you see this logic is basically giving you that power to essentially, you know, have a complicated logical circuit and you're interested if the current will pass or not, you can basically make a, make a logical statement and do the reduction of it. Yeah, here you'll, typically apply the algebraic reduction, like algebraic laws and simplify them further and further and further and further and further. And, further. and then you will get one expression which will tell you what is the key, okay? So this is one of the applications of, of logic. Okay. 